Good morning, and first of all, I would like to begin by thanking Beacon for their commitment and their support in wanting to build mental health nursing capacity at all levels. And their vision of a collaborative summit where they're bringing academicians and clinicians and policymakers all together to look at how can we develop innovative models? How can we look at building that workforce and creating the partnerships that we need? So with that in mind, my role today is to give you a snapshot of the state of nursing education. And I need to thank Dr. Hofek for that, who said, oh, Mary, you can do that. And um, <laughs> so I started writing the presentation. And I found that I'm not sure I can give you that state of nursing education or you know, what it is. And I'll tell you why I say that. Um, I spent a good couple of weekends just going through literature, finding things, wanting to say what's out there, what programs, what models are we using? They're all over the place. And that's good to some extent. It might not be good to other extents. So, for, so with that in mind, I want to thank Sherry, actually, for setting the stage. Um, because she most eloquently articulated you know, where practice is in the state of Nebraska, at least even in general, and, and for psych in many ways. Because what I found was I could not could not separate or divorce the practice environment from the educational environment. And I got to thinking that the state of nursing education is such that the one thing I will say to you today is if we do not use these summits effectively to pull together as academicians and clinicians or as practice environments, we will not, two years from now in this summit, be any further ahead than we would be today. And so when I talk today, it's interesting because I'm actually going to repeat a couple of things Sherry said. So number one, you could say, well, great, you're reliable. Or you could say, oh, my goodness, really? You're repeating? But that's OK, OK? So that was the first thing. So I cannot separate. So I will talk a little bit about the practice environment, especially for psych and then what it might mean for education. And I did come away with more questions and more challenges for you than I probably did answer. The second part is that unlike Sherry, I could not often give you solid data. I can't say other than I can tell you about how many maybe colleges or universities offer certain programs. I cannot tell you what they all do. I cannot always tell you how many graduate and say, I, you know, that I want psych nursing thing. I can't always do that because the data, Mary, Dr. Kramer goes, I love data. The data are not all, always out there for education. And maybe that's one thing we all need to look at as both um, clinical partners and academic partners. What is, you know, at least in the state of Nebraska, where are we? What are we offering in terms of education and the types? But I will get to that in a minute. So with that in mind, I did need to start also with a little bit of the workforce. So the Department of Labor in 2015, you know, Sherry, when you said you, that when you first asked them to raise their hands, about three out of 100 did, that fits the national profile. In 2015, 2% 2 of the active RN workforce, not including NPs, were employed in psychiatric or substance abuse hospitals. That's the generalist workforce, 2%. That figure has not changed in probably at least 10 to 15 years. We have not moved that needle. Now, is 2% enough? I don't know that. Because again, we, we don't have solid data anywhere that says it is enough. And part of the reason for that is because, again, we have to look at what does being a psych nurse mean? What are the competencies and skills that are going to be needed in that area? But I want to add one other thing, because this is an issue for both education and our uh, clinical partners. The annual mean wage for psychiatric nursing nationally is $67,000 which is about 32, 49 an hour. It is the lowest nationally of all levels of nursing. Now, in the state of Nebraska, it's 61,000. 
There are only two states lower than we are for psychiatric nursing. Now, the reason I bring that up from nursing education and our, academic, our, our clinical partners is there are a number of organizations now that actually are partnering with nursing colleges and universities. Of course, not just to do loan forgiveness, but to actually pay for maybe their last year of college if they go into nursing, or do this or that or the other. Should we pay for their last year if they're looking at psychiatric nursing? Should an agency say, if you come to us, we'll pay maybe your last year if you go into psych? We'll pay, or we'll pay more. I don't know that. But we have to look at that. How do we help incentivize those students? But there's another trend. Oh, so that's that little black trend up there. OK, see that little black trend? That's us in psych. But there's another trend that's definitely affecting nursing education. And that is general SRNs are beginning to play a greater role in primary care nursing. They're managing chronic illnesses. They are serving as care coordinators and care managers. And that care coordination and management involves understanding, of course, the education of a, you know, how to educate a patient. What illnesses are we looking at? How do we navigate? And what's our role, of course, in medication management? And I'm not talking about saying, are you on your medications? I'm talking now that there are many agencies that are allowing generalist nurses under protocols to look at, in some of those states, changing some of that medication regimen. So you say, so what's that, why, why is that important? Well, in 2015, 43% of physicians worked with nursing care managers, generalist nurses who were care managers. So the questions that I would have of our state of nursing education, and some of the things I've seen, of course, are increasing undergraduate programs that are looking at care management, that are saying, this is a model we need to look at for our nurses. But my question becomes, how are we teaching psychiatric nursing within that model? Are we teaching it the old way? Are we still teaching that you've got to talk to your patient and do this for this period of time or do this or that or the other? Or are we saying now that you have to learn what those competencies are as a nurse generalist but apply them in a setting where you might be seeing a person with diabetes and mental illness and you are going to transition them. You are working in a different environment other than the hospital and you are transitioning that person but maybe they have a severe mental illness and diabetes. What are you doing? You have to, we have to look in education at how we are preparing that generalist to function, not just in a psych hospital, but maybe as a care manager, but who understands psychiatric nursing competencies. Are we doing that? I would challenge us as educators. Are we doing that? Or are we functioning off of old models? Well, they've got to understand schizophrenia in this environment and this model. Are we doing, what are we doing? That's the problem that I'm having in giving the state of the nursing education addresses because other than maybe going to every college and university in the United States and saying, what are you doing? It's hard to find out what we're doing other than looking on a website and saying, oh, well, they say that this course is going to be psychiatric nursing 101 or care management of. What does that mean? You can't get a handle on that sometimes in education. The, but we, what we do know is, we do know that nurses are, and, and, and our students are functioning in acute care psychiatric settings when they come out of school. They are functioning in primary care settings when they come out of school. They are functioning in community-based psychiatric types of environments. They are also functioning in schools where we have increased um, issues with mental health. We've seen that. And as Hillary asked or pointed out, what, does that gen what is that generalist going to look like? How are we in education we still teach maybe psychiatric uh, concepts in schizophrenia, et cetera. But what are we doing? And I'll talk about that in a few more minutes. Nurse practitioners. 
Now, I found some statistics, and I looked and looked, and some of the more recent ones came actually out of 2012, where w there were 115,000 nurse practitioners, not psychiatric ones, wouldn't that be nice? Of those, only 8.4% were psychiatric nursing. The other 91.6 were areas other than psych. Of those, 790 or 0.7% were employed in psychiatric hospitals. Now, what it didn't tell you was whether those 790 were psychiatric nurse practitioners. It said they were nurse practitioners. Now, I think that has ramifications for nursing education and the state of nursing education. In the next 10 years, and I'm sorry to say this, Sherry, but they're saying that there will be a 36% drop of nurse practitioners in state settings. There will be a 38% increase in private psychiatric settings. But again, they don't tell you, are these psych nurse practitioners, or are we going to be preparing family nurse practitioners with some psychiatric skills? What does that mean for nursing education? I think the biggest trend, however, that is going to affect us and is affecting us in nursing education is the age of integrated care, where collaboration to provide comprehensive care in one setting is going to be more of the norm. Now, that setting is not necessarily going to be psych, though. So are we going to be embedding psych nurse practitioners in non-psychiatric settings? What does that mean? I, I went to several websites of schools that I know have um, excellent psychiatric nursing programs and um, excellent nurse practitioner programs, and there were a few that were preparing family nurse practitioners with at least one course in advanced mental health practice. But more than not, you didn't see that still. They were preparing them as we probably traditionally have you know, prepared maybe a family nurse practitioner. So something's going to happen in the age of integrated care. First of all, we're going to embed psychiatric nurse practitioners, hopefully, in many of these non-psychiatric clinical types of environment, family environments, PEDS, OB, et cetera. How are we preparing in education at the advanced level that nurse practitioner to function in an integrated setting? Are we teaching them the concepts of integrated care at the advanced level, along with their psychiatric nursing skills? Are we teaching them how to function in that type of an environment? Are we also preparing some non-psychiatric nurse practitioners? Not, definitely not at the level of a psychiatric nurse practitioner, but are we preparing the non-psychiatric nurse practitioner to understand that they are, in these integrated settings, going to see psychiatric patients? And how do they know what they can work with and what they have to refer to others? Are we preparing them for that? Think about your, your own programs, those of you in this room that are educators. Are we preparing them for that? Are we preparing them for the models of integrated care? We get very, very concerned about understanding a skill, but are we preparing them for the context? of those skills? Are we providing content? Are we providing experiences in some of those different types of areas? Or are they all working with a psychiatrist? Are they all working with, you know, are they all working in a psych setting? Are we, are we having them maybe work, are we having the advanced nurses working in some of those practice settings that are more non-traditional in their practicums? Are we doing that? And again, are we sufficiently leveraging our partnerships with our clinical agencies to develop models of integrated care and the education that's required for both the generalist and the advanced practice nurse to deliver care in those environments? What about some of the newer models? Do we always? Oh, I should probably not say this one. Do we always need an NP? If we're looking at care management, what about some of the newer models of the clinical nurse leader? 
those of you who may, in education, that model hasn't taken off very well yet in Nebraska. We're, we're very late adopters in the clinical nurse leader. These tend to be advanced generalists individuals with their master's degree who are generalists. They did not maybe want to be an NP, they didn't want to focus like that. But they focus more on care management, care coordination, outcomes of care for specific populations. Could they be used as our care managers? Could they have the population health concepts of psych and work in those settings as the care coordinators, as the care managers? Could they work in those integrated settings to help transition? I thought this was kind of cute. It's not what you look at that matters. It's what you see. Now, the reason I, I bring that up is, what is the state of nursing education informing its, in, 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 form, in formation of its students? especially the undergraduates. When I looked in the literature, I was surprised that things that I saw 10, 15, 20 years ago, and I'm kind of old now, so the time I've been in psych, some of those things haven't changed. One is, does our own profession of nursing, and how do nurse educators speak to their students about psych nursing? Some of my colleagues, and I, I hate to say this, but say, you know, we told the student they really need to, when they get out of school, do real nursing for a while. You know, they can always learn to talk to a patient, but they've got to learn those skills. So I've had students come in to me and say, well, I wanted to do psych, but. And I always tell them, first of all, you should do something you love. You know, if you have the passion, you'll stay in it. But how many times do you hear your, those of you in nursing education, do you hear your fellow nurse educators say that to, a, to an undergrad? Get those skills. Well, I always kind of thought working with a psych patient, you needed some skill. So think about that. Challenge your own faculty if they say those things. The other thing we have to look at is, and this was fascinating to me, those of you that may be more near a retirement, um, how many times has a student said to you, we walked in on orientation day to the clinical setting and think of this as, as our clinical partners. The psych nurses were just like watching TV with the patients, playing cards sitting behind the desk, passing the meds. They're not doing anything. I want to do something, okay? So I thought, well, I did a sherry. <laughs> I thought, okay, that's old. I'm an old nurse. That doesn't happen anymore. Interestingly enough, in a 2016 editorial by Marianne Nyhart, she challenged clinician and educators on this very same issue. She says it's still occurring. But what she challenged educators on is, how are you, and again, Sherry made a mention of this, how are you explaining what a psych nurse does? So when I'm watching TV, because I used to be an adolescent psych nurse, when I'm watching TV with the adolescents, I never watch TV. I was watching the kids watch TV. But what was I watching for? What knowledge did I have to have about these kids and about the illnesses to know what to do? Can our staff nurses say that? Can our staff nurses tell a student that? This is what I'm really doing? Can our faculty say, this is what she's really doing when she's doing that? Or do we take the time to do that? I was very surprised to see that article, but I would challenge you to all to read that article because it, 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 was, it was one page, it was an editorial. But it said, we've got to get back to explaining what our competencies are. 
and to integrating those competencies into our classroom and into our clinical. So when they come back and say to you as an instructor, they were just watching TV. You can help say what that meant and what they were probably doing. Also, as many as, as the media, well, let's look at our professional role blurring. One of the best things about psych is that we're interprofessional. We have prided ourselves on that. We work well with social work. We work well with psychology. We work well with psychiatrists. The problem with that, it's a double-edged sword. Have we lost some of our identity? Maybe that's why the students say they're not doing anything. The social worker came in and did the group. Have we lost some of our identity? Can we delineate our competencies? Do you take, those of you that are in education, do you take the APNA's scope of practice and the competencies that they've set up for both undergraduate and graduate nurses in psych? Have you translated those into your curriculum? Have you helped the student to understand that the social work or the LMHP might be doing a group, but what is your role? What do you do with that? Have you looked at your competencies? Have you integrated them? The other issue is the media portrayal. We have students coming in who are very influenced by media. We know that, right? How does the entertainment and the news media portray mental health? <coughs> They're dangerous. They're all criminals, right? They're unpredictable and they're bizarre. Five minutes, okay. Um, how do they portray nursing? If they portray it at all, they're mean, they're nasty. So how do we work together to change that? Do we make for a welcoming environment? Do we change their, how do we as educators and clinicians change? Faculty resources, 114 universities offer graduate psychiatric nursing programs. More going to the DNP. We will need psychiatric nurse practitioners who are prepared at the doctoral level. Do we have that? It's hard to tell. We have 136,000 NPs actively employed, but only 2.9% are employed in colleges. Again, the wages are low. They're the lowest between colleges, hospitals, or clinics. Number of psychiatric nurse educators for undergraduate, we don't know. It's hard to get those figures. The preparation, we have many nurses coming out wanting to teach at our undergraduate level and in psych. They come out with masters of nursing in education. They're great at curriculum, but they'll tell you, yeah, but I've worked a year in psych. Do they have the content? Do we need residencies for some of those nurses coming into faculty positions to teach them the content, to have them become more aware so that they can teach the breadth and the depth needed for our undergraduate students? Ah. What, about under, oh, what about undergraduate education? Emphasis more on concept-based curriculum. How do we articulate our competencies? with concept-based curriculum? How do we articulate the competencies in psych? For the generalists, not just in acute care settings, but in community settings. We have increased competition for both co acute care and community-based settings. We are not going to be able to educate our students in acute care settings all the time. So what are we doing in community-based settings? Are we allowing them experiences across the continuum what about our RN role models? The biggest thing in the research will tell you, welcoming environment and mentoring. What about our new, the partnering that we have done with Lasting Hope that Creighton, UNMC, and Methodist have done with Lasting Hope to start dedicated education units in psych. We're probably one of the first in the nation to do that. And it is successful. What about the residencies that individuals talk about? Do we need residencies in psychiatric nursing when they come out of school? Do we need residencies for the NPs when they come out of school in psych? 
There will be lesser, there's lesser time spent in psych rotations, by the way. If you look nationally, we have decreased the numbers of hours. So how are we integrating that into the physical setting? Uh-oh, uh-oh. What road do we choose? Let's hope we choose the open road. I think that's the beauty of this summit, is that we're bringing together clinicians, policymakers, and educators. We can drive that bus, but we can't, education can't do it alone. If we want to make Nebraska the flagship state for determining how to increase the, the nursing workforce in psych, both at the generalist and the advanced level, we need to drive the bus together. We need to look at innovative ways of incentivizing these students and of preparing them both in acute and practice settings. Thank you. That was quick. I, I prepared more than I had time for.